Hello all, I am uh, trying my hand at uh, my first tutorial video on how to paint 6mm Bacchus Confederates. So I always start my uh, army projects for uh, Civil War with the Confederates because I like my Confederates pretty mixed up uh, as far as butternut and gray go. Um, so uh, they're, they're typically twice as long to paint as the Union troops uh, who are dressed more uniformly. So first thing you can see is on this uh, stand here, I have a base coat, all of them, a gray spray paint. And then I've come in with a highlight gray and just dry brush them. Uh, that tends to uh, make stuff pop. It tends to make uh, the details a little bit easier to see and to paint, which is helpful for older eyes. Um, and I typically put about five of the uh, Bacchus strips on each one of these. Uh, I'm only painting one of these strips or one of these popsicle strips today. Uh, I, when I do these, I will paint them four or five at a time. I can uh, typically get that done in an hour. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to show you my technique. So uh, first thing I would typically do on a uh, 28 millimeter figure is I would paint the skin. Uh, I've always started with that first. But on these, I find I actually start with the clothing and work my way from the pants kind of outward. Um, so that's the main main difference that I've found with these. Uh, I apologize. Uh, the camera is right in front of my hand where I typically would be painting. So uh, my hand's going to hit the camera, I am sure, multiple times. I'll do my best not to. But uh, you can see um, on the Bacchus miniatures, uh, they're not... The detail doesn't pop quite as much as your uh, Adler miniatures do, but uh, there's some good, good kind of stop lines um, so that you don't wash a lot of, um, or you, you, just a lot of good um, uh, seam lines or uh, fold lines there so you can keep your, your paint a little bit easier in the areas. Um, put quite a bit of paint on for the bottoms and work my way around. I, since the Bacchus troops, uh, you can't even really see the, uh, the shoes on them, so I certainly don't bother with them. However, on some of the Adler miniatures I've done, uh, they're, they're walking a little more briskly or maybe even running, and so some of their heels kick up and you can actually see their shoes, which then I would then come in and paint a brown or a black. Um, I am painting probably looks like about 30 strips of these, uh, maybe even 40 strips. And so I have uh, painted some in uh, butternut, which I spray painted just kind of your standard uh, Krylon, Krylon uh, oh, light tan beige as a base coat, and then came in and, and did similar. Uh, technique that I'm using for the gray. But uh, obviously to paint your figures the fastest uh, way possible is to uh, kind of paint them all at the same time. So the one difference that I do have on these when I paint is I'll uh, mix up the hats. So I'll kind of do them as I'm using the uh, various paints to reflect those hats. So I'm going to paint some of the, the hats here khaki. Um, got to make sure on some of these that the brims get gets painted. But that's pretty good. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and paint the uh, canteen and the haversack strap. I just, uh, this detail is so small, but it can really uh, pop out nicely, so I will use a white. I know they had lots of different kinds, but I just like using the uh, kind of canvas white on there. I also do this before I paint the bedrolls, because if your paint, your white strap tip happens to go onto the bedroll, then it's uh, very easy to paint over. The detail um, is, is comes out pretty pretty good and 
most of the miniatures, Bacchus miniatures, so it's not too hard to paint. Um, you can see that the Bacchus miniatures and the poses are basically the same with variations on the clothing that the Confederates are wearing. So that makes, makes for easy painting. Uh, it doesn't make for as interesting of uh, eye candy on the table. However, one thing that I do to break up this is I will individually clip all of these figures and then put them onto a base with uh, eight, seven, eight, maybe even nine troops. So <clears throat> that's what I do, and that's one of the reasons why I... Uh, paint all of these such uh, in, in similar ways because I'm going to break them up anyways at the end. The front I find is a little tougher. It's um, sometimes good to water down your paints to get this in. One thing that I have found recently is I have started to use a lot of Vallejo uh, air, and so it's mixed together for um, an airbrush, but the paints are already thinner, and so they're kind of nice to, uh, to use because you really don't have to thin them down much at all um, when you paint your troops. I also use a wet palette which you can find plenty of videos on the internet to help you if you have a question on that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use black to paint the cartridge boxes. They're Confederates, so again you could use brown. Typically they were brown or black. I'm sure there's going to be some Civil War nerd out there that'll tell me that I'm wrong, but that's what I stick to. I find the black definitely pops a little bit more on these figures. And then I also use black to come in and just paint the uh, black belt line on the back. Again, just to give you a little bit more depth, a little variation on just a big old swath of gray. I guess they're not really big old because they're six millimeter troops, but you get the idea. Um, then I come in and paint a couple of these um, hats black. it and now I'm going to paint the bedrolls so on these troops I think I'm going to do two strips in red and then uh, well I'm going to do three in red and uh, two in green so just start on the back this is the advantage of doing all your strips the same you can do it a lot faster than trying to individually paint all of these bedrolls a different color. Um, nope, I said I was going to do three. back done and I come to the front and again it just makes it simpler if you do them all the same all right 
And then I'm going to go to the green. I've done these bed rolls in all kinds of different colors. Just did some purple ones, done some orangish ones, some rust colored ones. I've done some tan ones. I leave some of them gray. Kind of all over the place. Like I said, I like my color Confederates to be fairly colorful. Which is a pain to paint, but I like the way they look on a table. One thing I forgot with the black is some of these guys are wearing kepis, and so with the kepis you need to come around the front and paint the brim. Flat hats or forge hats or sack hats or whatever they're called. So, got that. All right, and then next thing I do is I paint the guns. I start off with a nice little blob of paint and paint the butts of the guns. And I just hold the troops like this. At the end of this, I'm going to come in with a uh, Earth uh, Agrax Earth Shade, I think it is, from uh, Citadel. And that will cover up a lot of these mistakes or things where you don't necessarily aren't able to get color all the way up to the color because of just how tiny these guys are so after that then come in and run it up the gun rifled Sorry if these guys are not always in focus. I'm doing my best here. And like I said, this is not my best best work. I have a big camera right in my face, so it makes it a little hard to to see around. Got that, flip it over, and do the same thing. Um, sometimes I do use this uh, this medium here. That is also from Citadel. If my paints get a little thick, I'll use that just to thin them out. So I do use, like I said, a, um, a wet palette, but even that being open and the fan going over my head and the lights sometimes dries it out. Alright, and I want to have some of these hats be nice and brown. Try to make them random on the different uh, sprues just so they aren't, gives me more variation. All right, so got the rifles done. 
there's some of these that I missed on the side. So I'm just going to go back in and touch them up. Next thing I'm going to do is get some silver. This is a fairly bright silver. I'm sure that the bluing on the guns was not quite as bright as this. But sometimes with miniatures this small, you want to go for contrast to uh, make some of the details pop a bit more. So that's what I'm doing on this. Once you put a wash on it, it definitely uh, tones it down. And it seems to blend in pretty nicely, but uh, it's still fairly eye-catching. Some of the Adler miniatures that I painted had some nice long bayonets on it, so that really uh, helped to make them pop. So that's it. And then the last thing I do is I come in and I will do the skin. Start with the hand that's wrapped around a rifle. One other thing that I've mentioned in some of my other videos about uh, the Bacchus miniatures is that the mold lines are really tough to get rid of. Uh, they use a, a heavier lead or a, a denser lead and so it's not quite as easy to clean. Uh, and then also the miniatures are just so close together that it's really hard to to get in there with anything that will take that off. So um, if you paint, if you're going to leave them on the strip that as they come then I don't think that's as big a deal because that'll hide that. But since I'm going to individually clip all these and then put them on not in an even line, it might show up just a little bit more. Some of these guys got beards. I go ahead and just paint, paint over top of it. And then after I got all the skin, I will come in and put some skin tone on the back hand. I've been using this brush a little bit, painted almost all the miniatures so far with it, so it's starting to get a slight curl in the end, which is sometimes annoying, but it's actually kind of helpful sometimes when you're painting the, uh, the faces because you can wrap it around the face a bit and have just a little bit more control that way. So you just learn to manipulate with what you got. All right, uh, last thing I do is I will come in, you can use black or brown for this, but I will come in with a brown and find the guys that have beards, which there's not too many of these guys who's got beards. Um, let's see. So you just kind of wrap it around the side to give them the sideburns. And let's go from there. Last thing, you want to check the back. The guys who are wearing the forge caps, it's keppies, you want to make sure you paint the the hairline on them. So that is it before I do the wash. Um, so you can see not a ton of details, um, fairly plain, but these will get turned into these once the wash is on there, which I think really uh, kind of pops, pops a little bit more. So, 
To do that, you take this Agrax Earthshade. I get a little br bigger brush. Make sure to moisten the brush. Make sure to shake up the Earthshade. And then I will come in and liberally apply the Earthshade to all of the figures. Better to put a little bit more on there because you can always draw it off with your brush and move it on to another miniature. And do the same. I do make sure that I kind of draw the, the brush up on the figure um, from the bottom up because that's where a lot of the shade you want to be anyways, particularly up underneath the hat and um, such. That way you avoid having to paint every single guy's hair. All right, and then I just kind of come and move it along the cap, the hat, and then that pops it out a little bit. So the uh, this uh, Agrax Earthshade is is a little glossy when it finishes. It's not too bad, um, but I'm going to hit it with a uh, a spray anyways after I get them all based. So that's what I do. That's how I paint my figures. Uh, I think it's fairly fast. Like I said, I can get um, four or five of those uh, popsicle sticks done in an hour. So I hope that helped. Good luck on your painting.